I'm Christina Mayer. I'm the profile coordinator for the strategy and management profile. And in this video, I would tell you a little bit about the strategy and management profile. So let me start by sharing the screen with you and pulling up the presentation for the uh, strategy profile. So uh, what I want to talk to you about is uh, to start uh, a little bit about the strategy um, and management, what it is, and then go into the different causes, the different tracks, what we think about uh, this profile, and in the end say a little bit about what former students have chosen uh, to work with afterwards they've taken the strategy profile. Now, this is Gary Pisano. He is a Harvard professor, and um, I think his um, reflections on what strategy is, is something of the best I've ever seen. Just tell me how your resources are allocated and how you spend your time, and I can pretty much tell you what the company's real strategy is. I've seen my share of uh, strategies, which are just uh, put aside and not implemented at all. Nice words, um, a lot of analysis behind it, um, hiring, consultancy and so forth, but it doesn't really come to something. And why? Because it's not really what is implemented and it's not there in the organization. And looking at strategy, uh, it's really hard sometimes to say, what is strategy? And it depends on why you approach the elephant. If you approach the trunk, you might say one, th see one thing. If you uh, look at the tail, you might find something completely else. If you sit on the top of the elephant, you might see a very good view from the top. But if you approach the elephant's feet, you might see it all from the bottom. And this is really what we also try to achieve in this course to look at strategies from different angles but if we should try and um, try to have a common um, definition of strategy you could say that it's a commitment to a coherent mutually reinforcing policies or behaviors aimed at achieving a specific goal so there are some key words in this. Um, it's a commitment. So it's something you want to happen in the long term. And it's mutually reinforcing. So strategy is not just about one thing. Uh, you need to have all these alignments between elements supporting the strategy. It's got to do with behaviours, not just thoughts or intentions. And it's driven at a specific goal. Now, most of what we are concerned with in the strategy field is profit-seeking firms. And most of the strategy literature is about that. How firms compete with one another and seek profits. However, uh, the last decades, uh, there's been much more attention to other types of goal, more socially related goals. And this is just, um, a picture of the UN sustainability goals. So reaching other goals than just a pure uh, profit seeking is also important. And thirdly, we have also um, the whole public service. And um, in these times, of course, with the Corona barriers, we see that the public sector really plays a very important role in making decisions that influence all our behaviors a lot so uh, looking at also strategies not just from the private sectors and maybe from uh, the ngo but also looking at it from the public sector will be important in these uh, strategy in this strategy profile now a key concern in particular when you go to uh, the uh, profit-seeking firms but also uh, reaching other goals is to understand why do some firms perform better than others and this is a key key question in the strategy profile 
and a lot of attention will be given to understand that. That's when we have to look at the firm's environment, based in um, the outer environment with political, technological, environmental, social, economic um, drivers uh, of change. But we also need to understand uh, the impact we have in our closer competitive environment. But it's not just efficient to look on the outside, we also need to look at the inside, at the resources uh, that the um, companies have. And in terms of resources, the human capital, how can we get the human capital utilised the best we can? So, of course, in analysing uh, the environment, we will both look at the technological environment, so which I will come back to this later, but we really have pulled more resources into understanding what is going to go on uh, in IE, um, big data, uh, all the analytical tools we now have, programming, and everything that is going to go on in uh, our technological environment. But of course, this also includes understanding other areas, what is going on in terms of our environment, what is going on in terms of the political uh, change that's in our society um, and the societal uh, changes. So this is really looking at the outer environment. But we also need to know uh, and understand what makes organisation tech. What really um, means that you uh, are going to implement the strategy? What does it imply? To bring people on board, to get teams to work in different ways than before, to structure the organisation, to have psychological safety. And there's a lot of issues we need to understand to make organisations tick. So again, it's not sufficient to bring something on the paper. We also need to make um, organisation involve the employees and to take them on board. In the strategy profile, we have four building blocks. Now, the first building block consists of the mandatory courses, and most of these courses will be offered in the first term. Then we have a recommendation for you to do some specialisation in the second semester, and the third semester, and the review will go on exchange, and some of you will also choose to take electives from other profiles. And finally, this the master thesis. Now, although I told you uh, so far that these are sort of um, semester wise blocks, they are in reality not. But there is a kind of a progress going on um, in this table. So most students will start with the mandatory courses, then go into the specialization, then electives, and then master thesis. But you could also uh, have some um, electives in the first semester. You could start your specialization in the first semester and so forth. The master's thesis is more of a given. Now, we currently, we have two mandatory courses, but we are going to step it up to three uh, in 2021. So the first course is strategic analysis and actually, <laughs> I'm the one giving that, so I know quite a bit about that. That's to give you a basic of um, strategic analysis and get you all on the same page. Second, we have business research methods. We think this is really important, teaching you to define a program, how to investigate both qualitative and quantitatively, and uh, also to teach you how to um, really do um, a good research project. Thirdly, we have strategy and practice, and this will be offered from 2021. 
and this strategy in practice we intend to uh, put you all the students into uh, real businesses and uh, where you work with the bis uh, these businesses from the first day and it's a really more practice oriented course but unfortunately we have it this in place this autumn but we will have it in place the next autumn. Now, um, we also recommend that you take um, some specialization and we have developed four tracks in the profile. These tracks are leadership and change, digitalization for growth, studic uh, analytics and analysis, and entrepreneurship. Now, you can actually um, pick and choose. These are recommendations if you really want to specialize into one of these fields. But you are free to mix, mix and match between this. Uh, for us, it's important to have some areas of specialization where we can uh, pull our resources and also employ our future resources. Uh, and as students, you have an opportunity to follow one track or another. Uh, but it's really up to you. So let me go through the four tracks we are offering. The first is leadership and change. Now in this track we really want to teach you more about uh, how to involve employees, about the teams, about the change going on, how to implement change, how different uh, leaders act and what is most efficient. So this is really about the human side of the organization and the course we are offering um, are quite a few uh, and let me point to you that there are some um, notation that i want to talk to you about first now if it's in italics it's a course that is offered in more than one track if it has an end to it um, in parentheses that uh, in brackets that means that it's given in Norwegian and last if it has a star uh, in the brackets it means that there's a cap on the number of students being able to take that course so this is uh, what we um, intend to give and as you can see uh, in this uh, track there are two courses that have a cap that's negotiation and managing change and innovation and the main reason for that is that um, it's the teaching methods in this course is very much um, discussion with the students by the way we also want the rest of the courses also to go in more skill-based direction and to teach you skills which you need as managers working with strategies and working with organization you can also see that this is a mixture between uh, leadership uh, teams um, uh, learning about processes negotiations change um, hrm and also global and international strategy so it's a bit of a mix and match but we hope you would like this track the second track is a newcomer, newcomer in the strategy profile called digitalization or growth. This will be closely attached to a large research initiative at the Department of Strategy, uh, where we have invited multiple partners into a research program. And these uh, partners are going to work very closely with us as researchers for a long time. And we want to bring these partners also into uh, this track. Now, the digitalization of growth is a really a mix and match between two uh, different areas. Digitalization to create value in the businesses and business models. And as you can see, um, we also uh, have a focus on sustainable business models and also corporate social responsibility. So in this, you will see that we have these multiple goals uh, going for us, and we're interested in how businesses respond 
we're changing the business models in this digitalized world. And I expect that we will learn a lot in this track and that we will develop more courses as we go along. The third track is strategic analysis and analytics. Now, strategic analysis has been with us for quite some time, but we see that uh, we now have a lot of possibilities with new technologies to do deep analysis with uh, numbers and data, and we therefore added analytics to the, uh, this track. So what you will see is that this consists of courses with uh, an eye to, uh, to um, uh, strategic analysis uh, in different uh, sort of ways, strategy of finance, it's uh, some courses on competition and cooperative strategies. Um, there's also uh, imported courses with the digitalization and business models, but also, um, and most importantly, we also added a number of uh, more um, number based, analytic based courses to really give you the skills not just to analyze qualitatively but do this in a very robust robust number weighed a number uh, way of doing these strategic analysis fourthly we have a track on entrepreneurship and um, this is on also um, one of the profiles so we're really giving you the opportunity either to take the profile as a, a major um, within entrepreneurship or choose this track within the strategy profile. Now, um, there is not um, perfect similarity between the courses you can take here and in the new business development profile, uh, but we have selected some courses which we think are most relevant to this particular profile on strategy and management. Um, and we want to teach you how to act as entrepreneurs and give you some skills, both the personal skills, but also the skills you need to build a, a real business. And some of these courses are also part of other tracks. So now I've given you an overview of the four. These are the courses, the way they uh, will uh, appear in the catalogue. And these, some of these have Norwegian names because they are given in uh, Norwegian. So this is a list of the mandatory courses of the leadership and change, digitalization for growth, strategic analysis and analytics, and entrepreneurship. Now, if I have got this right, um, I tried my best, but there might be some, you probably need to check, but the blue are the autumn courses, the red are the spring courses, um, the ones in black are courses given in both the spring and the autumn, the ones with the stars are uh, the cap on student numbers, and the italics is courses that appear in more than one track. So this is the structure we're offering you. And as I said, you can mix a match or you can follow one of these tracks. It's really up to you. Now, what do people work with after NHH? It's a lot of um, variety. So strategy is really a broad subject. And if you're interested to work with strategy and organization, you can work in any organization you like. Um, so it really gives you the skill, it gives you the people skills we know you need when you go into any business or if you're going to start your own company. And it also gives you um, competences to analyze and to, make, uh, to give input to, to strategic decisions. You're probably not going to start to make strategic decisions unless you're starting your own company. But when you work, you might give a lot of input to strategic decisions and organizational decisions. And we know that that's something our students really get involved when, when involved with, with once they start working. 
Now, what you will see is that our students, they um, go into a lot of different kinds of, of work. So this is one who started in the major uh, incumbent uh, and uh, multinational um, Telenor, uh, which is a telecom company. This is another student who started in the largest bank in Norway um, and uh, who started as a corporate trainee. Eivind Kvinge is another student. He started with uh, one of the major consultants firm, um, PricewaterhouseCoopers, which is, of course, uh, also a lot of students being employed there. And then we have one at A.T. Kearney, um, who also said that uh, he got a lot of views from the strategy profile. I have more students here again. One is a manager in, in Ernst & Young, who says that it gives me a solid academic confidence. Um, Ingrid Humlung is a product manager uh, at Kavli, a company who produces um, cream cheeses um, and a lot of uh, products with, with um, dairy products. And um, she's really happy with what she's done. Uh, we have another who's also become a consultant in Ernst Young, and the fourth that's become a consultant in, in Accenture. These are just some examples. Um, we have students working for the public sector. We have students working in the voluntary um, um, organizations, and we have students starting their own firms. With the strategy profile, you're really equipped to do everything uh, that you want to do. And it gives you a broad picture, but at the same time, you get skills that not all the students have. So it's now up to me to just wish you a warm welcome 